we want to welcome you to the Back to Basics online church. Praise God, where we reach out to people all across this nation and even in other nations of the world to present the gospel of Jesus Christ, to let people know that God loves them. God is changing people's lives through this worship service, and we praise God. We're here to to enhance the body of Christ and to work along with the brick and mortar church and 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 just let the the people who uh, generally do not attend church or there are people who don't have churches uh, to know that there is a place where you can meet God and God wants to meet you and one of those places is the Back to Basics online church. I give God the praise. I thank God for the vision. Thank God for the ministry. It's a place where you can come to God just as you are. You don't have to jump into your car or your vehicle and buck through all that traffic and uh, and, and all that the morning rush and uh, you don't have to deal with road rage and and frustration but you can come to God right where you are you can be in your car traveling uh, you can just pull over to a nice uh, side of the road or to a park and just uh, participate in the worship praise God we just thank God we thank God that you don't have to get all dressed up and and uh, 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 Unroll your hair or roll your hair or whatever. Uh, uh, you don't have to put on uh, fashionable, fashionable clothing. Um, we just thank God that you can come just as you are. We bless God. Well, I want to give a shout out to uh, uh, so many people. And I know when I start calling names, I get into trouble. But we want to give a shout out to some of our friends in foreign countries, to Bishop Elijah in Kenya, and Jacko in Kenya, and Boycott in Kenya. And we want to give a shout out to Bill Abraham in Tanzania. We want to give a shout out to Memo in Belgium, and a special shout out to Annika and Richard Martinson in Sweden. Hey, Annika. Hey, Richard. We thank God for you guys. And then a special shout out to our main man in Dubai. We want to give a shout out to David Carter, originally from McKinley, Texas, and now residing uh, with his precious wife in in Dubai and doing a great work for the Lord in Dubai. And so this is a worldwide ministry. We're reaching out to people all over the globe, and we, we come to let you know that God loves you. We love you. We give God the praise. I want to give a shout out to my friend Christine Ryder in uh, Chesapeake, Maryland. Christine, hey Christine, unmute your phone and come on and say hello to us, would you please? Can you hear me, Pastor? I can hear you. Yes. Good morning. Praise the Lord. It's beautiful out today. Praise God. <laughs> How are you? We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Good to hear from you again. You too. Love you guys. Love you too. Love you too. Give give our love to your hubby. <clears throat> and you all just enjoy being on the Chesapeake. Just enjoy it. Praise God. Talk to you yes. later. All right. We want to give a shout out to Christy and Aaron Carpenter and the Carpenter family up in Idaho. Hey, Christy, if you can come on and say good morning to us, we'd appreciate it. Good morning, Mr. Carter. How are you today? Wonderful, Christy. Wonderful. How are you guys doing? We're doing awesome. It's beautiful here. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. All right. All right. Praise God. Okay, we want to give, we'll talk to you later on, Christy, okay? You all keep all right. on loving one another and loving the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Terry Ch Chiquito, Jeep Girl in Colorado. Jeep, come on and say hello to us. Hey, Jeep, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, praise God, praise God. And we're blessed having you with us today. Amen. Well, bless you and bless God. Praise God. We have a wonderful message. It's going to bless a lot of people today. We thank God. Talk to you later on, Jeep, okay? Megan, Megan, Ecola. Megan, come on and say hello to us from California. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Megan. 
How's everybody doing? I hope you guys are having a blessed Sunday. Praise God. Praise God. I, I believe we are. They are. I'll take it. All right. Okay. Okay. We'll talk with you later on, okay? My main man up in Pennsylvania, Ryan Trogler. Ryan, you and your lovely wife, God bless you. Uh, God bless you, Pastor Carter and Miss Jackie. It's a beautiful day, and the Lord has made it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we're going to get ready. I know there's so many others on. I didn't call your names. Uh, Tyrone uh, Kirkpatrick is on from New York. So we got a lot of people. Um, praise God. I know my children are on from Maryland and uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania and so many others. Hey, Ryan, while you're still on, how about opening us up with prayer? Would you please, my friend? Sure thing, Pastor Carter. Heavenly Father, please bless, bless Pastor Carter and the word you're going to give him today. Bless this awesome church that he, he has created and, and the people that's in it. Uh, we just want to bless you and praise you and give you all the glory, Heavenly Father. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. We thank God for Ryan Trogler up in Pennsylvania for leading us in prayer. <clears throat> and we're going to proceed. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Back to Basics Online Church. Back to Basics Ministries was organized in 1996 in Chester, Pennsylvania, when I lived in Chester, Pennsylvania. And the Lord said to me, it is time for the church to get back to basics. And that's what we've been uh, preaching for uh, that amount of time since 1996, back to basics messages, uh, encouraging the church, let's get back to the Lord. Let's get back. Uh, the church has been way out there. Uh, uh, some churches have gone way beyond the black hole. And the Lord said, let's bring the church back into where uh, we can fellowship together. And uh, let's get back to basics, prayer, praise, worship, loving one another. And that's what we do. Praise God. We're not sophisticated. Uh, we don't not try to pretend that we're a anything greater than what we are. We just come in the mighty name of Jesus, giving thanks to God for Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. Jesus died on the cross, took away our sins. He died for all mankind. So we do not play favorites. Well, we do not <clears throat> uh, uh, um consider any group or any person bigger or higher than anyone else. We're all equal in God's sight. God loved us all so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. So we thank God. We praise God. We love God. And God loves you. And we're, we're discovering um, and I've discovered over the years that God is blessing people so mightily. When people make up their minds, I'm going to get closer to God. Uh, I've seen people uh, come to God just as they are and get set free. We've seen miracles. We're seeing miracles through this ministry. We're seeing signs and wonders. And we're, we're seeing people getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're seeing households change. And praise God. And we're, we're seeing that uh, many people out there are, are hurting, and many in the 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 main the the uh, brick and mortar churches are kind of like lost and confused. They're not getting what they need and what they're seeking for. And so we're not trying to substitute for the brick and mortar church. We just want to be faithful to God and do what God has called us to do, and do it to the glory and honor of God. And we invite everyone to come in and just be a part of this service. Praise God. Uh, we don't trouble you with commercials or begging for money or, 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 or announcements that have no meaning. We don't sell tickets. We don't sell raffle tickets. We don't play bingo. We come to worship the Lord. So we thank you that you have gathered your family around uh, either online on your, on your computer or on your phone, and we have people all over the world. We have people in Kenya. Some are sitting under trees listening to this ministry. Some are uh, in, in their buildings. We have pastors who uh, turn, turn their whole church family 
in tune to this ministry to get what God is giving us. So we want to give the best. Um, this ministry spends a lot of time in prayer, seeking God for what is best for his people. God, what do you want for your people? And so for the last uh, several weeks, we have been teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, these messages, and they are available on my YouTube channel, or you can email me or text me, and I can send you the link to these messages. We have been looking for the last several weeks at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have looked at the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom. We have looked at the gift of prophecy, the gift of faith. We have taught on the gifts of healing. We have talked about the working of miracles, and last week, the discerning of tongues. And so this week, and for the next two weeks, we're going to be ministering on the subject, the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. So we want to ask you, wherever you are, if you're on your cell phone, mute your phone by pressing star six. Everybody do this now so that there be no disturbance in the the recording so that people all over the world can hear these messages. Praise God. And um, if you want the re recording of the message, then contact me after service. I'll make sure you get the recording. So somebody out there needs to mute your phone. Um, star six. Star six. Mute your phone. There's a disturbance in somebody's phone. Okay, listen up everybody, somebody needs to mute your phone. Let's do this, do this. Mute it, mute it, mute it, star six. Okay, today we're going to talk about the gift of tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to tackle this question that has caused confusion throughout the church. Satan has used this subject of tongues to cause confusion, to try to disrupt the flow of the Holy Spirit, but the devil is a liar. The devil is a loser. We're going to look at tongues for the next three weeks. Today I'm going to minister on what is the gift of tongues. What is the gift of tongues? And next week... going to look at, we're going to, I'm going to teach on what happens when we speak in tongues, and then the following week we're going to use the, uh, the subject uh, or, or a similar subject of the gift of tongues, a mighty weapon in spiritual warfare. So let me just repeat that, what we're going to do in the next three weeks. T today uh, we want to lay a foundation uh, for the gift of tongues. And we're going to talk about what is the gift of tongues. We're going to clear up a lot of things. People have so many misconceptions, and Satan has taken this subject of tongues. He has caused so much confusion in the church. Well, we're going to, the Holy Spirit is going to get some things straight. So we're going to look at what is the gift of tongues. Then next week, we're going to look at what happens when we speak in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to miss next week's message and then the follow because we're going to look at some amazing things that happen when we speak in tongues. And then the third week, we're going to look at tongues, a mighty weapon in spiritual warfare. We're going to take a look at this whole thing about spiritual warfare and how uh, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues can subdue the enemy. And then after that uh, week, we're going to have a series on spiritual warfare. So God is giving me some subjects that we believe are going to edify, build up the body of Christ. Because many of you are going through stuff that um, uh, uh, some of it is overwhelming. Uh, uh, Satan might think he's got a foothold in, in some of your households, your marriages, on your jobs, in the church. But God is going to give us some, mess some messages that are going to take us over the top and, and have you in a place where, where Satan would tremble even when he thinks about your name. 
Satan will tremble whenever he thinks about your name because he knows he, he will know that you are a mighty man or woman of God and that the Holy Ghost is working in your life. So as you come in and come on in the next several weeks, open up your heart to the teaching. Um, and, and, and many of you have been taught in, in these subjects. Uh, let's be retrained, retaught. And some of you may uh, receive some corrections in what you have previously been taught. Praise God. And so we thank God. Thank God for Ryan for leading us in prayer. And um, let's just review these gifts of the Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and chapter 14, the Bible teaches about the gifts of, of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives gifts. The Holy Spirit gives gifts as he pleases, as he pleases. And uh, these gifts are for the edification of the body of Christ and so that God can be glorified. So let's take a look at some scripture. And starting, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12, where the scripture says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy, Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Remember that. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Everybody does not get the same gifts, ladies and gentlemen. And there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. In other words, there are different ministries, different ministries. Your ministry may be different from her ministry. Her ministry may be different from his ministry. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God who worketh all in all. God may be working differently in your life, wor working differently in my life, working differently over First Baptist, working differently at Second Presbyterian, but it's the same Lord, the same God working all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So when God manifests his Spirit, it's for all of us to prosper and profit. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. And the word of wisdom, when God gives the word of wisdom, God shows you what to do in a situation. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. What is the word of knowledge? The word of knowledge is, hey, God, what's going on? I don't understand. What is this? And God will give you a word of knowledge to explain that situation. And then God can give you a word of wisdom to show you what to do in that situation. To another, faith by the same Spirit. God will give you the gift of faith. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Um, note in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 12, there are gifts of healing. Praise God. That's a beautiful revelation because there are people who think they are the only healers. No, God gives gifts of healing. There are many ways in which God gives healing. God gives gifts to doctors, to surgeons. God gives gifts to men and women, boys and girls. You can lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus and they shall recover. That's a promise from the Lord. So God gives, God doesn't give all the gifts just to the prophet or to the pastor or to the teacher. God gives gifts to whomever the Holy Spirit desires. And so we are to seek the gifts of the Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Listen to this. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. God will give you tongues. You can speak in a, 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 a heavenly language. You can speak in that language. And, and he gives you your language and gives this person that language. And he gives each person their own tongue. And so Satan has taken this uh, thing about tongues 
and he realized, Satan, ladies and gentlemen, the devil realized how powerful tongues was. And when we look at the first century church, when those people began speaking in tongues, they subdued enemies. They subdued the devil. Uh, uh, they subdued kingdoms. They pulled down strongholds. And Satan realized what a powerful thing tongues was, and he began immediately to try to shut down the gift of tongues by causing confusion in the church. And the devil is very effective today in causing confusion because there are people who don't uh, believe in tongues. There are Christians who do not believe in tongues. There are Christians who have been confused by the teachings they have got. There are bishops who have hundreds of churches under them who don't believe in tongues, and then thus, thus hundreds of churches under them are suffering out of pure ignorance. So, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to raise your spiritual antenna today and listen to the Word of God as God uh, instructs as God corrects, for the word of God is profitable for, for doctrine, for, for correction, for uh, instruction in righteousness. And so we're going to believe God and, and trust the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you to guide us this day in the name of Jesus and that uh, your word will not return until you void or empty. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, tongues and interpretation of tongues work hand in hand. Ladies and gentlemen, we've seen people cause confusion in church because they got baptized in the Holy Spirit with the gift of tongues and without learning how to use the gift, the Bible says the gift is subject to the prophet. You have control over the gift, ladies and gentlemen. You're not just a blurt out any time you want to because you speak in tongues. There is decency in and order in the church. Paul had to correct the Corinthian church because they were out of order. Ladies and gentlemen, they were out of order. But the problem is, ladies and gentlemen, the problem is this. There are churches today. There are Christians today. I hope you're not one of them. There are Christians who you can't tell them anything. You can't teach them anything. They are so bent on doing what they want to do, and they do it whenever they want to do, however they want to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen hard-hearted pastors. I've seen stubborn bishops. I've seen people in leadership positions who were out of order and in error but would not accept correction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a terrible thing to be in a position of leadership and influence and not be able to accept correction. The Holy Spirit will correct you. I guarantee you, you will be corrected. So if, if you're in an area where you need correction and the Holy Spirit sends correction, receive correction. The Bible says he whom he loves, he chastens. I want to be corrected when I'm in, if, if and when I'm in error, ladies and gentlemen. And so we all need to be taught we all need to be corrected. That is why we need to come to God and say, Lord, give me a teachable spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, don't ever think that you know so much that you have, a, you have it all that you can't be taught, you can't be corrected. I've seen in my uh, career, I've seen people get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've seen them get the gift of tongues. And, and ladies and gentlemen, without studying the scriptures, without reading 1 Corinthians 12, 13 to 14, I've seen them go off the deep end and, and cause so much confusion in their homes, on their jobs, in their churches, in the mall, in the town center. And I've seen people just go around just speaking in tongues, ignorantly, ignorantly, ignorantly ladies and gentlemen, without instruction, with, without honor in, to God. Ladies and gentlemen, the gifts are subject to the prophet, but the prophet is under the, the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and God and the Holy Spirit. And so let us be teachable. Let us learn. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had to learn. I still have not yet arrived. I'm like the Apostle Paul. Paul said, I have not apprehended, but this one thing I do. I forget those things which are behind, and I stretch for those things which are ahead, and I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And as we stretch for things, things which are ahead, and as we press toward the mark, we must have a teachable attitude. We must be able to take correction. 
we must be able to make the necessary corrections. Many of us have been improperly trained. Many of us have been uh, raised in ignorance. Many of us have, have heard things that our mama said or our grandmama said or Uncle Willie said or Cousin Jean said, and they were not correct. They were not scriptural. Ladies and gentlemen, there's still things in the church being perpetuated uh, that are not of the Lord. And so the Holy Spirit wants to give instruction. The Holy Spirit wants to bring order. The Holy Spirit wants to destroy confusion. But Satan is so busy. Satan uses pride, ladies and gentlemen. He uses pride. Pride will keep a person from being corrected. Pride will keep a person from receiving the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pride will keep a person living in ignorance. And pride has, has gripped the church so much and all over the world, pride has gripped the church, and the church needs to go back to basics. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to humble ourselves. Go back. Take me back. Take me back, O oh Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back, O oh Lord, to the place where I first believed. Ladies and gentlemen, we all need to go back to that place where we first met Jesus. And, and, and recall the moment when Jesus washed our sins away and, and the Holy Spirit entered into us and God spoke peace to our hearts, told us we're saved, we're born again by the Spirit of God. Let's go back to that old landmark, that old place. Let's go back to the cross. The songwriter said, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get away from the cross. Don't get out there so deep. Don't get out there so deep in, in, in what you've learned in college or what you've learned in school. Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many people who have degrees and they're CEOs and got their own businesses and are successful financially. And, and, and because they have gotten success from the world, they don't need Jesus. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, Jesus is coming back again soon. And you cannot bargain, you cannot deal with him based on the degree you got from the university or what people have said about you or the accolades that people have given you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why the Bible has given us the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible has given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts of the Spirit. And so we praise God. Praise God. I hope this is helping somebody. I hope this, this is helping you. Uh, praise God. I hope this is helping you. Oh, praise God. Okay. Is there anyone who has a question at this point? Ryan, are you hearing me well? I, I have a question, Dr. Carter. Yes, Megan. Not everybody gets the gift of tongues, am I right? <laughs> I'm going to cover that. Or is that. it available? Okay. I'm going to make, okay, continue with your question, dear. I um, kind of like the conversation that we had had a couple of days ago about being well-rounded. Yes. Um, does this apply to that? Yes, it does. Yes, okay. it does. Your question, your question, uh, everyone does not get the gift of tongues. No, we see this in 1 Corinthians 12. The Spirit gives as He desires. He gives the gifts. However, however, Megan, you can ask God for the gift of tongues. You can ask God. For, for example, God may have given you, the Holy Spirit may have given you the gift of prophecy or the gift of knowledge or the gift of wisdom or the gift of healing. And, and if you want the gift of tongues, you can ask God because the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Amen. Okay. <laughs> I see what you did there. Okay. Okay. You following me? I'm following you 100%. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, and one more thing, Megan, since we're on this, because we're going to cover this. Megan, I've seen many people. Uh, God has used me to bless people to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. We've had Holy Ghost baptism sessions. Um, and I invite any one of you uh, and, and anyone you recommend, if they want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and want to know more about it, they can give me a call. We go on a one-on-one, -on -one and uh, 
I've seen people get baptized with the Holy Ghost over the telephone, over the internet. I don't have to be there with you. It's the Holy Spirit who gives you the gift. And then, and then, Megan, I've had experience where people uh, 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 wanted the gift of tongues, and so uh, God has given the anointing that we can teach people how to receive the gift of tongues, and then, Megan, to teach them how to speak in tongues. We're going to have some practicum in these next couple of weeks, Megan, okay? Awesome. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. okay. Praise God. Praise God. Thank, thank you, Megan, for your question. And uh, many of you, if you have questions, uh, if we don't cover it all during these services, you can call me at 770-559-9. 9710 and I'm I'm going to put that in in the chat window 7705599710 call me we we'll set up an appointment and uh, or email me Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com I will set up a personal appointment with you try to answer any questions you have and and we we've, we've been doing this in the last couple of weeks many of uh, the church family has been contacting me or Jackie, and we've been ministering on a one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody needs to know your business. Nobody needs to know that you called or what you called about. But we're seeing people's lives change. Miracles are happening, ladies and gentlemen, in people's lives. And so the gift of tongues. Okay, let me just give you a little bit about the gift of tongues. The intention of the spiritual gift of tongues is to glorify God now but also to prepare himself, ourselves as his church to glorify him forever in heaven. There's going to be one language in heaven. It's going to be the Holy Ghost-filled, led language. We will, no, we will no longer need the gift of tongues in heaven because we will be right there with God. But the purpose of the gift of tongues right now is to glorify God, ladies and gentlemen, in a language that God understands. Now, yes, God understands English, or if you speak Spanish, or if you speak French, or if you speak German, or if you speak Russian, God understands those languages. But we find and we're taught uh, that, and we, we know by experience, that Satan would take those languages and he would try to confuse things, just like he did when uh, Nimrod and the others built the Tower of Babel. They wanted to reach God, and God shut that down. He confused them, and he cursed the one world language thing and, and created languages all over the world. Now God is doing the reverse through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God is putting everyone on one accord that we can speak to God uh, no matter what language we we are trained in. If, if we speak English or Spanish or uh, French or German or Russian or Chinese, we can come to God in the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. When you pray in tongues, you receive your own heavenly language. Ladies and gentlemen, God loves you so much that the Holy Spirit gives you your own language, your own language, ladies and gentlemen. It's like booting up your computer. When you access your computer and put in your own password, nobody else can get on your computer unless it's a real experienced hacker, and the devil is an experienced hacker when it comes to hacking Christians. But ladies and gentlemen, God will give you your own language, and you can tune into him. There are advantages of praying in tongues. I'm going to be speaking more about this next week, about what happens when you speak in tongues, what happens when you pray in tongues. But let me give you a little taste of this. Let's, this, just, this is just like licking an ice cream cone. Lick, lick. Ladies and gentlemen, when you speak in tongues, Satan cannot handle it. When you speak in tongues, he cannot shut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, when you speak in tongues, Satan does not understand. That's just a little foretaste. Now look at the church, ladies and gentlemen. Megan, look at the church. Look at the church. The church has been operating in ignorance because... Pastor so-and-so says, I don't want that tongues thing here. Bishop says, I don't want this in my churches. And ladies and gentlemen, look at all the churches, the denominations, 265 denominations in America. Most of them are anti-tongues. Most of them are 
are built on built on their own intellects. They've got their own schools. They've got their own education programs. And many of them are operating in their own pride, their own denominational pride, and have shut the Holy Ghost out. Ladies and gentlemen, not only that, but we're talking about households. We're talking about families. We're talking about believers who would rather try to work things out. I got this. I can handle this. Uh, I, I'm smart enough to do this, and they think they can do things on their own intellect, in their own ability. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been grieving as the church. We have been grieving the Holy Spirit for centuries because of our own spiritual pride. Rather than let the Holy Spirit do what he knows how to do and guide us in the, the ways of power and miracles and signs and wonders and giving us the help that only he can give, we have been shutting him out as the church. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in these next couple of weeks, I want you to expect to see a change in your life, to see a change in the church. I want you to get a, a new revelation of God and his power. Look at the Holy Spirit and his awesome presence and his office and what he wants to do with the church. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know many of you are educated, many of you are already ordained, many of you have been ministering for a while, uh, and, and many of you have been operating without the gifts of the Holy Spirit or recognizing or acknowledging the gifts. Just as Megan asked about the gift of tongues, you can ask about any of the gifts of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're in a situation where you don't understand what's going on, ask God, give me, God, a, the gift of knowledge. Reveal to me what's going on. Then when God speaks to you and told, tells you what's going on, ask God, God, give me the gift of wisdom so I can know how to handle this situation. God will do this. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get sick, God, give me the gift of healing. Show me, Lord. Heal me, Lord God. Or heal my child. Show me what to do, Lord God. Ladies and gentlemen, these gifts are given by the Holy Spirit as he desires Praise God. We're not to be jealous of anyone else's gifts. But, ladies and gentlemen, we can ask God. We can ask God for these gifts. We can ask God. If God has not given you the gift of tongues, don't go around saying, I don't believe in it. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. So many members of the body of Christ have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. They have shut him down. They have grieved him. Many pastors have said, I don't want him in this church. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why so many churches are dying. That is why 80% of people in the in the church do not attend church anymore because they want more but many of the leaders have shut them down many of the uh, traditional uh, members of the church ladies and gentlemen they don't want the Holy Spirit and so praise God and they chase Holy Ghost filled people out of the church but ladies and gentlemen there's a place for you there's a world out there this internet is reaching people all over the world. This online church is reaching people all over the world. The Paul Begley prophecy online church is reaching people all over the world. God is using the foolish things to confound the wise, and he wants to use you and me. Not that you are foolish, but I have been foolish. But God has done a new thing in me, and he's doing a new thing in you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we look at tongues, we're looking at a language that God gives us to help us to be successful for him. Take a look at what Romans chapter 8 says in verses 26 through 28. This scripture ought to take you over the top. Romans chapter 8 verses 26 through 28. Look at the power, the power of of. of of the Holy Ghost baptism and the power of speaking in tongues. We're just going to give you a glimpse of it today with this scripture. Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Ladies and gentlemen, this scripture lets us know that we all have infirmities. We all have weaknesses, every one of us. But the Spirit helps us with our infirmities. The Scripture says, 
when we come into different situations, we don't know how to pray as we ought. We may be praying from our own understanding, but we may not be tackling the issue as it should be. Ladies and gentlemen, many times we're guessing. And we're praying and guessing as we're praying. But ladies and gentlemen, look at this. But the Spirit itself, that should be translated himself, because the Spirit is a person. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Ladies and gentlemen, as you're praying, as you're wrestling with a situation, as you're trusting God to meet that situation, and ladies and gentlemen, when you exhaust your English language, or you exhaust your Spanish language, or you exhaust your Russian language, or you exhaust your vernacular, and you really can't tell God, you really can't cry out to him, you really want to cry out to him, you want God, you need him there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's like laying your hands on the, the, the horns of the altar, and you've got a grip on God. You've got a Jacob grip on God. Jacob put a grip on God and wrestled with him all night long and said, No, I will not turn you loose until you bless me. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the type of prayer that changes things. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the type of situation we face when we have to deal with sickness or your husband's been cheating on you or your wife's been cheating on you or your child is sick or you don't know what to do or you've lost your job or you're, you're, you're going bankrupt or you have a need. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of prayer this Lay hands on the horns of the altar. Get a grip on God prayer that when you try to pray in English, when you get to the place where, oh, God, my God, oh, then, you, then the spirit starts groaning. Mm, mm. Oh, you're praying. You're sincere. Your eyes are on Jesus, but you just run out of words. It seems like your words are not reaching God. And then you've got to realize, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a partnership Megan, this is a partnership. It's between you and the Holy Spirit. You're not alone. Romans 8.26 says you're not alone, but the Spirit helps our infirmity. When you're trying to touch God, when you're trying to get a breakthrough, when you're trying to get a breakthrough for healing and deliverance, and you run out of words, and all you can hear is groans. Mm, mm. That's the Spirit groaning inside of you, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Ghost is groaning inside of you. God understands that groans. The Bible says the Spirit groans uh, with groans and uh, travailings uh, that are not articulate. You cannot articulate that with your speech. But as you kick in and let the Holy Spirit inside of you, he's groaning inside of you. He's asking you to move over. Let me take over. He says, move over. Let me, the Holy Ghost is saying, move over. Let me take over. I know how to talk to, I talk to God. God knows my heart. He knows my mind. He searches your heart. He knows you have a need. So let me take over. Ladies and gentlemen, Megan, it's all about letting the Holy Ghost take over when you talk to God. And when you let the Holy Ghost talk to God, you have the gift of tongues. You hear sounds coming out of you that you don't understand. It's a language you did not learn in school. Nobody taught you this language. Nobody else has this language. You have your own language. And the Holy Ghost may break through. Or you might just hear some words. And you may say, wow, what is that? I never heard this before. Then when that starts to happen, Megan, you just put your mind at ease. Get your mind out of the picture. Release, release your spirit to the Holy Ghost and let the Holy Ghost pray. You lay hold on the horns of the altar. You're gripping God like Jacob gripped him. You're gripping on to God. You're not going to let go. You're in partnership with the Holy Spirit. You've prayed as, as well as you can. You can't pray anymore. You don't have the language. But when you release the Holy Spirit, let those rivers of living water come through you. Let the rivers, the Bible says, all who believe in the Lord, the Holy Spirit will flow through you like rivers of living water. Keep your faith Keep trusting in the Lord. Don't worry about what those sounds sound like. It's the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. He's now doing the, 
the speaking. You're doing the talking. He's doing the speaking. He's giving the utterance. Why? Because the Bible says likewise. The Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. We don't know how to pray anymore. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Those groanings turn into words, ladies and gentlemen. Those words turn into par uh, 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 paragraphs, ladies and gentlemen. Those paragraphs uh, turn into a sweet, uh, uh, a sweet sound in the ears of God and a sweet savor in his nostrils. And so as you learn how to yield to the greater one in you, the scripture says, greater is he in us than he that's in the world. I know this is helping somebody because it's helping in me. This is edifying. This is edifying. It's comforting, ladies and gentlemen, to know that you know that you know that you can yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit, that after you have exhausted your prayer, you don't know what else to say, but you know you need a blessing. You need a breakthrough. And when you're like Jacob, God, I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. God, even though my church is against tongues, God, even though my bishop is against tongues, God, even though my family is against tongues, God, even though my friends hate tongues, I believe, I believe. And ladies and gentlemen, you will experience the Holy Spirit experientially. You will experience him as he breaks through, as you hear sounds like you've never learned in school, rising up out of your innermost being like rivers of living water, then you begin saying those sounds, just like a little baby who first learns how to talk. A baby says, goo goo, ga ga, goo goo, ga ga, da, ma, goo goo, wa, water. Ladies and gentlemen, then you learn how to speak in tongues, just like a little baby learns how to talk. It may sound, it may start off with a strange sound, grada sati. What? What is that? Grande cerebro. Then you ask God, what is that? And then God kicks in the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of knowledge will say to you, that's the Holy Spirit within you. And, you, and then you're comforted. And so you do it again. Grande cerebro. Yo, yes, Satashi. And you start hearing sounds coming out of you. And the sounds you hear, you start pronouncing them. You start saying them. You start speaking them. Before long, before long, your hand is lifted up. Your hands are up. And you're singing to God. And then all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, the pain leaves your back. The headaches disappear. No more migraines. Ladies and gentlemen, you walk into your child's bedroom. You lay your hands on them and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, that fever leaves your child. Ladies and gentlemen, those demons that have been plaguing your mind, they're no longer there because the devil can no longer torment you when you're praying in tongues. He can't touch you. The devil can't handle tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a weapon, a mighty weapon that the church has been ignoring out of pure ignorance. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has been ignoring this mighty weapon out of uh, pride. Ladies and gentlemen, the gift of tongues can prevent you from paying humongous doctor bills, medical expenses. Learn how to pray in tongues. Learn how to go before the Lord when you've prayed uh, to the maximum with your English language or your native language. Then open up your heart and let the Spirit pray to God. You're a partnership with the Holy Ghost. You're right there with the Holy Ghost as he talks to God on your behalf. And as you get in the flow, as you say, take over my mouth, Lord. Take over my mouth, Holy Spirit. Talk to God. Take as much time as you want. Hallelujah. Then, ladies and gentlemen, you feel the joy. Then you'll feel the anointing come upon your body from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. You feel the fever break. You feel the chains break in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, you feel the freedom. You feel the freedom. You feel the running in your feet. You can run through a troop like David. You can run through a troop, leap over a wall. You feel the anointing. The pain is gone. The pain is gone. Whoops, there it goes. The pain is gone. When you pray in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, 
this message today is just a foretaste of what God has for you, of what God has for you when you pray in the Spirit, when you open up your heart. It begins with believing that God wants you to have this gift. Yes, Megan, every believer does not receive the gift of tongues, but hallelujah, you can ask for those gifts that you have not been given by the Holy Spirit, you can ask, Lord, give me the gift of prophecy. Give me the gift of wisdom. Give me the gift of tongues. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit later on, probably next week, on the importance of the gift of interpretation. You can pray in an unknown tongue. You can pray in an unknown tongue and not understand what you're saying because only God understands it. It's the language between the Holy Spirit and God. God understands. He knows the mind of the Holy Spirit, and he knows your heart. And then God can give you interpretation. You can ask, Lord, what was that all about? What was I praying about? What was the Holy Spirit saying? And then, ladies and gentlemen, God will give you the spirit of interpretation. That is why in the church, no one should pray in tongues without interpretation. I use the gift of tongues as an example in this message today. But in the church setting, there, there should not be someone speaking in tongues or, or making a presentation to the people in tongues without proper interpretation. God, the Holy Spirit, is decent. He's orderly. He's intelligent. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has been missing this great anointing. People have been paying uh, 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 much of their paycheck, much of their retirement income, going to us buying medication and pills and this plan, that plan, uh, to get healing, to get health. And most of what they're doing is just to uh, maintain or manage the pain. Ladies and gentlemen, praying in tongues cast pain out. Ladies and gentlemen, as you practice praying in tongues and worshiping in God and making tongues a part of your worship, as you get to yourself, and you don't, don't try to be a show-off, don't, you, know, you don't have to perform in front of your family or the church family, get with God on a one-on-one -on -one and begin in your daily worship, your daily uh, devotions. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. And watch how God will bless you. He will take the pain out of your body. He will take away that limp. He will destroy that cancer. God can do all things but fail. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has been missing out on one of the greatest weapons God has given us. But yet, even so, tongues is not the greatest gift of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, seek after charity, seek after love, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you prophesy. Prophesy. Prophesy means you speak the language God gave you, the language you understand to people so that they understand. But in your prayer life, in your devotions, in your worship, exercise the gift of tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, you can get your household set free. You can get your family set free. You can lay hands on the sick. If you're sick, you can lay hands on yourself and begin praying in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, it works. I know it works. You can get delivered. You can cast out demons out of people and even out of yourself by praying in tongues. I know it works. I know it works. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at what happens when you pray in tongues. We're going to look at tongues as a mighty weapon for spiritual warfare, for deliverance, I want you to tell everybody you know, come on, come on, join me next Sunday, and let's get this teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, and it's all scriptural. It's all scriptural. Once again, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit also maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Well, bless God. Bless God. I had a lot of notes, but I, uh, 
let the Holy Spirit lead me. And um, there are so many other things we can learn, and we will learn in the next couple of weeks, but we're going to close out this message. And then I want you to stay online. We can have a little practicum uh, after we stop the recording, and, and, and I can honor your questions, and we can uh, talk about praying in tongues and what it's like. And, uh, and, and if, if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and uh, you want the gift of tongues, you stay online. We'll stay on for about another half hour after the message and um, minister to you. For those of you listening to the recording, if you want to make a personal appointment or appointment or contact me or call me, um, I'll be glad to talk with you. And if I, I can't talk with you, I'll get someone who knows to talk with you. God wants you to have this gift. God wants you to operate in it. God wants his best. Ladies and gentlemen, this gift of tongues is blowing Satan out of the water, shutting him down. Satan has uh, realized when, when he's around a tongue talker, he can only do but so much. Uh, he's powerless. He's powerless against the gift of tongues. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you. And we honor you. We worship you. We thank you that you loved us so much that you gave us your only begotten Son. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you promised the Holy Ghost for us. And you poured out the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And every believer since then has the Holy Spirit living on the inside. Lord, help us to be, uh, according to Ephesians 5.18, let us be not drunk with wine and which is excess, but let us be filled with the Holy Ghost. And let us be filled, God, with the gifts. God, I pray for those who, who have not received the gift of tongues and who desire the gift of tongues, that you will grant them their requests. And, Father, I praise you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that we walk by faith and not by sight. Bless every listener. Bless those listening to the video. Bless those who will contact us later on. And, Father, we pray that you will move mightily. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.